You're very welcome to another edition of For Adults Only. And to a topic which has provoked great interest, particularly in recent years. The topic is abuse. Now, abuse, as we read about it in the media, may tend to concentrate perhaps on child sexual abuse, but it has many forms. And I'm joined by Paul Gilligan, who is a psychologist and uh, who has ex a lot of experience in dealing with the victims of abuse. And, and what I'm looking for is a definition. I mean, at what point does something become abuse? I think it's very difficult to actually define abuse. I think people's definitions will vary depending on who you're talking to. But I think, I think, for example, if you take sexual abuse, I think the best definition is that it's it's involvement of a a child or a person who doesn't understand, who's not at the maturational age to understand what they're getting involved in and it's involving those people in a sexual act which they don't understand and which w which will damage them i think physical abuse is best described as a physical act violence or aggression that causes harm or damage to a child i think emotional abuse is where emotions are used again to harm damage and, and in some cases give, just give uh, different or counter messages to children and lastly neglect which is often not seen as abuse but is abuse which is where a person fails to give a child adequate care and as a result the child is, is damaged or harmed. So it's a very complex area and, and where you draw the line in terms of defining abuses, you know, you'll get different opinions on is, that matter. Is abuse within the family limited to children? I don't think so. I think, I think that children are the most vulnerable people in a family. They're the most likely to be abused because they're the, less, the least powerful. But obviously abuse can, can, can occur to, to different members of the family. Children can abuse children. Older children can abuse younger children. Males, uh, husbands can abuse wives and wives can abuse husbands. So I think abuse can occur across the spectrum, but children are more likely to be abused. Well, lest anybody think that we're talking about a few isolated incidents that grab an odd headline from time to time, we've got some figures from the Garda Commissioner's report which would indicate that in an eight-year period, it's a strange period to monitor, but from 1983 to 1991, the total number of cases of abuse was in excess of 18,000. Sure, and I think it's probably likely that that figure underestimates things. I mean, recently... These are reported cases. Uh, absolutely. The, the, the IMS, uh, ISPCC survey suggests that 12% of the population have suffered contact sexual abuse. 15% of women, 9% of men. I mean, that's a huge amount of people who've, who've actually experienced contact abuse. That's not including those people who would have been abused but not at a contact level. So I think, you know, we, we, it's very difficult to overestimate the problem. I think we're more likely to underestimate it, and reported figures will always underestimate it. Yes, on another discussion on another show, somebody pointed out that perhaps even the vast majority of girls growing up at some stage may have been subjected to uh, uh, indecent exposure by, by a flasher. Sure, well, well, this research suggests that 16% of of females would have had some sort of abuse uh, that's including being, that being, being subjected to, to flashes etc. Interestingly the figures that broke down from the Garda Commissioner's report, and I don't want to get bogged down on statistics, but the, just the pure size of these things is, is, is interesting. Concerning cruelty and neglect, of those 18,000 odd cases, 13,000 were cases of cruelty and neglect. Sure. It's, it's a huge problem. I think, I think it's a huge problem because A, it's, it's very difficult to define, it's very difficult to get a prosecution, it's very difficult to draw the line. People find it difficult to, to, to draw the line between uh, uh, physical abuse, neglect, uh, discipline, etc. But I think, I think it's a huge problem. I think that we've got to look at in our society the whole issue of quality parenting. What's good enough parenting? What do we expect of parents? What do parents, what, what should they expect of themselves? I think physical abuse and neglect is a huge problem and I think it is underestimated. There's, a, there's another figure that, uh, that I want to, to, to throw out here too to you. That of all of, of those huge numbers that we talked about, 18,000 uh, cases and 13,000 neglect, um, 4,900 reported cases of sec child sexual abuse. Of, of those, prosecutions, 203. Uh, convictions 33 and of the neglect 11 prosecutions and three convictions that's right the the, the issue is and again the, the research suggests that in Ireland for example 70 percent of the people who were abused told nobody at the time and 40 percent still have told nobody and I think the reasons they say is because they're, they, they, they fear that they won't be believed, they fear that people won't understand, they feel dirty, they feel that they were to blame. I think that's a serious 
that, that that's their serious issues for, right. for our society. C can, I, can, can I move on? You wanted to come in there. Yeah, I, mean, I just wanted to just, just back up what Paul was saying, but, but also a very frightening, uh, you know, statistic in the, the, this area, and it's apart from people, you know, being afraid to tell other people. It, it's even when people do tell other people, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind, kind of less than 5% of those cases uh, uh, ever reach court in the first place. Less than 5% of reported cases of sexual abuse of children ever reach court, which is frightening because you, you would assume if somebody tells somebody else... But is that the way to deal with it? I mean, you're what, a forensic psychiatrist. Yes. I, I deal mostly with, with offenders, yeah. Yes, you work yes. with those offenders. Do, yes. Is court the, the, the place to, to treat them? Well, well it just shows um, about the kind of uh, you know degree of commitment our, our society has to dealing with these problems uh, when you know kind of less than five percent of the reported cases and that, that's only the reported ones and I'm not talking about the ones that aren't reported mm -hmm. that Paul's just referred to about five percent of the reported ones ever get to court which means that society isn't you know that serious and uh, you know trying to deal with the with, with the abused person or even uh, the, the the offender right, I, I deal mostly with offenders all right well, your colleague dr Mora woods I, I know you want to come in there I, I wanted to come in about the, the level of figures um, we did the figures for 1993 I mean, just is this from a, the rotunda sexual from abuse the rotunda unit? sexual assault unit yeah and we're something like 54 percent involved the guards um, and uh, the problem is you don't know till a few years later whether they're going to get to court. But we do know from the past figures that um, I would say without O'Connor, if we're lucky, 5% would ever get to prosecution. Mm -hmm. We're talking now not about children, we're talking about teenagers upwards, people who are clearly verbal uh, and who have reported to the guards uh, and very few of those cases will actually be prosecuted. Well, obviously there, there, there are legal problems involved in a lot of these things too, as well as the actual, if you like, the commitment of the state to do something about it in the state uh, machinery. But can I come back to the people that you have direct contact with, Dr Woods? In the Rotunda Sexual Assault uh, Unit, is, can you give me a picture of a victim? Mm. No, I, I don't like the word victim anyway, but... Um, the well, it, it, is, I mean, it, it is a crime. Any, it can be anybody. Anybody can uh, be sexually abused, man or woman or child. Uh, we would only see those people who were brave enough to actually get as far as us. Would the majority um, of the people that you see be female? Uh, the majority are female. We're seeing increasing numbers of men. Um, are there particular still, age groups at risk? Um, no, I think, um, as Paul said, that if you're a child in this culture, you are more likely to be abused because you're more vulnerable. But uh, the weaker sections of the community, m mentally handicapped, uh, we're seeing a lot of those now that didn't surface a few years ago. Um, women, on the whole, men are physically bigger than women and children, but they can be abused as well. Old people as well. That's, that's something people, that's coming yeah. to light. And yes, it, it, it isn't just a problem of children and kind of uh, young women. It's, it's, it's also a problem with middle-aged women in particular, mm -hmm. and and also older women. They're they're becoming a target group for a particular. Right. Rushing McDermott abuser. wants to add something there. You 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 you're the spokesperson for Women's Aid. Yes, I just want to put a different perspective on the discussion, Derek, if I may, since we're using figures. A uh, figure that came from the British Medical Journey, The Lancet, last year showed that 45% of children who are being abused, the mothers are being abused simultaneously, and that the abuse of the woman precedes the child abuse. And I think if we're really going to look at the whole issue of child abuse, we have to actually look at that in, in the context of women abuse as well, and how... Uh, what services are there for a woman who is being abused or a family who is being abused and really in this country we have to take mm -hmm. it right from you know the lack of refuges the mm -hmm. lack of state yeah. services and the lack of you know counseling services mm -hmm. for the offender All right, dr stein yeah, that seems to me what roshin is saying seems seems to me much much more important than uh, people going to court mm -hmm. that there should be a service there to deal with the situation, a family therapy mm -hmm. service to heal the families, that, uh, uh, because everybody is affected by abuse in a family. Whether it's between the mm -hmm. parents, the children are affected. It, it, taking the children to court, or taking the, the abuser to court, whoever it happens to be, mm -hmm. what's the magic formula that court can offer? We need good services in the mm -hmm. community. Probably not generally yeah. realised, Derek, but the community care <coughs> brief in this country is for children, that children who are being physically abused are in danger of neglect, that that is the, the community care brief. But children who witness abuse mm -hmm. are not considered to be in danger or to be emotionally traumatised. 
victims as well. And the oh, victims right. as well, you know, yeah. I mean, they actually have to be in danger of being physically abused mm -hmm. or being neglectful. But if a child is actually watching severe violence, mental or physical, between parents, they're not perceived to be in danger. I mean, that, that's a serious flaw and needs to be changed. All right, let's forget figures and statistics, but let's go back to Dr. Stein. You wanted to add something to that? Yes, I would like to say that uh, the, the, our legal system itself can be abusive. There are situations yeah. where um, an way? abuse, I have a, a, a situation where, for example, a person has not been proven to have abused and yet has been separated from his, his child, whom he's accused of, the, the and, and unable to see the, the child UK. for five, six mm -hmm. years, um, and yet nothing's been proven. Only, the, only the, 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 the other side has been analyzed, has been investigated. The, the, the father and the child has, haven't been allowed to interact at all, and yet they had a very good relationship before, before that. Uh, what I find difficult is to try and get a, fig, a, a picture in my mind of an abuser. Now, I said we weren't going to quote figures, but I discovered something when we were looking around these poor, reports. Only 8% of, uh, from one report, only 8% of abusers were actually over 50. So the image of the dirty old man, oh, no. the molester in the park, Whilst, whilst it still exists, it, it accounts for a very small proportion no, of, of abuse. Yeah. The majority of abusers are known to the children. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that's a very important point to make because, because it's, easy, it's easy to see an abuser as, as, as the person uh, in, in the dirty raincoat. But I think it's true to say that the majority of abusers know their victims and, and often think out what they're going to do, plan the abuse. So th I think that's a very important point to make. Most, you know, kind of most... Uh, uh, you know, abuse of all kinds, but, but, but in particular sexual abuse occurs in people's homes. Mm -hmm. It occurs in the child's home. And uh, the kind of most common abuser is a child's father, interestingly enough, and that he, he tends to be in his mid-30s. He tends to be a person with an alcohol problem and he may be unemployed. I'm not saying that they're excuses, but that tend, that's part of the profile. And it would be wrong to assume that abusers are kind of very bizarre people hanging around in parks. They are nice men often. Yeah. They can be nice fathers who can be seen as loving and caring fathers, but they can be very abusive. And also the paedophile who, who isn't a child's father but can be somebody who just picks up a child and abuses him can be seen on the surface as a very nice person. So child sex abusers are in general nice men. So there's no such thing as the uh, stereotype of a very nasty monster. Mm -hmm. These people are actually nice people. In, in terms of getting down perhaps to, to, to specifics, does child sex abuse normally involve violence or is it, um, if you like, a form of a perverse form of seduction? It's, it's a form of seduction. Um, a, a child is entrapped in, in some way where, where the child has no way of escape and in particular in a family situation where the unfortunate victim can be eight or nine years of age at the beginning of the abuse is totally dominated by a father, is made to believe that they want something, which is the sexual contact, which in the majority of cases goes from uh, fondling and uh, inappropriate kissing and so on to, you know, sexual intercourse. In, in, in a kind of minority of cases, it goes on to very serious physical abuse and even murder. But in the majority of cases, it goes to, uh, you know, sexual intercourse right. over a number of years. What, what I find hard to believe is that other members of the family circle are not aware that this is going on. I think it's important though to understand that, that, that in an abusive situation it's abusive dynamic that's set up that the, that the whole atmosphere within the family or within the house becomes abusive and there's an atmosphere of secrecy there's an atmosphere of mistrust so it's, 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 it's often people may see different behaviours they may feel that something is wrong but it's very often difficult to pinpoint and, and children are, are encouraged to keep secrets so it's very difficult also it's very hard to see who they'll actually tell because if you can put yourself in the position of a child if, 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 it's, if, it's, if it's a father who do you tell? The most trusted parent uh, is your father. So therefore, who, who can you tell? And it's very, it, particularly if you feel you're not going to be believed, or you feel in some way that you're to blame, that you're dirty, that, 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 that you've started the, the, the behaviour, that you've encouraged it. Karina Colgan, yeah. you, you've met a lot of abusers. I have, yes. Um, and like everyone here was saying, they are terribly normal looking people. Um, to, to look at them on the street, you wouldn't give them a second, a, a second glance. Um, and to, to reiterate, I think, what, what was it was that they, they, they come across as very nice people, and, and that's the frightening thing. Like many other people, before I started writing the book, you know, I, I read something in a newspaper. Now, I specifically am dealing with domestic violence, um, physical, sexual, and mental abuse within the home. 
And, uh, you know, b before, before I really got an insight into this, I think like many other people, I, I would read an extract in the newspaper and put it aside without giving it a second thought. But as it was only with the surge of media at attention, you know, to toward domestic violence that I decided, you know, that this can't go on. You know, we, we need, I think, a society to do something as a whole and to maybe in incorporate a greater understanding. Right, that's in possibly a topic for another, another program mm. because it's possibly too, too big an area for us to go into at the mm. moment. Just going back to your profile of the abuser, mm -hmm. I would hit if we left the impression that first of all that unemployed people no, that, that, uh, that, that would be a wrong profile to give, but it's just it's just part of the makeup of, of the profile. The, but it doesn't necessarily follow because seen. somebody is earning twenty-five or thirty thousand no, pounds. No, it goes right in a across comfortable middle class home. It goes right across the social spectrum. It goes right across uh, all, all the professions, all the trades, clergy, right. and so on. It's, it's, it goes right across society. The problem is, is broad. More um, yeah, we, we also profile um, the abuses that we uh, have every year, and it, the patterns come out exactly the same, and this is now 10 years we've been doing it. Um, there's two humps. The hump is uh, what Art said at th in the 30s, but the other big hump is in the teens, um, and we have very few people of 50 plus, you know? Uh, and one of the things that struck us a long time ago was the Rape Crisis Centre and ourselves are often asked into schools. We're never, never invited into a boys' school. We go into girls' schools. We tell them how to avoid being abused. Okay, how would, a, how would a concerned third party, first of all, identify a child uh, or, or, or indeed a young adult who could possibly be in the process of being abused? Well, um, there may be problems. Uh, there are a whole list of virtually any abnormal behaviour in a child, from bedwetting to running away from home to stealing uh, to drug abuse. Anything could be sexual abuse. That doesn't mean you say it always is. But children are very, very good at accommodating, and they accommodate to the abuse, and they can present as an extremely happy family. And this can disconcert, in fact, all carers who try to get into that family. Do you remember the, the program with the Kavanagh sisters? They actually made the comment, anybody looking at us, they showed a photograph of the three girls when they were young, yeah. smiling, and they said, look, anybody would have said, what a lovely family. Right, well, how do you advise somebody, somebody perhaps who could very well be watching this program and who is suffering abuse? What do, what do you tell them? Where do they go? Who do they talk to? I think it's important that, 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 first of all, we have to set an agenda of giving people permission to tell. I think there's a number of things they can do. They can phone a social worker in the community care area, they can phone Childline, they can phone the Rape Crisis Centre. They, they, they need to take action. And I think that's often very difficult for people because they're in a culture of fear and secrecy. But I, I, would, I would be saying to anybody out there who, who's in that position or, or has been abused in the past to take action. A woman who suspects that her husband is an abuser, what does she do? Again, I think it's very difficult in that situation, but it's very important to remember that ultimately, both for the good of the children and for the good of that person, because that behaviour is destructive behaviour to, 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 to the abuser. I think it's very important that they take action and they tell somebody. It's very frightening for a woman, though. Could I, could I, could I, could I just add something there? It, it's sometimes assumed that, uh, you know, unfortunate wives in an abusive situation at home are colluding with the abuser in some way. But in fact, they, they are abused themselves. And if they aren't abused, they are often frightened of the consequences. They're terrified to do anything about this abuser in their home because they know if they do something, they could be beaten. Or if the authorities even do something for them, it, it could mean this breadwinner going to, you know, going to prison. So it's a dreadful situation. And more for than a woman. just the breadwinner, because emotions are very confused. I mean, this could be st still somebody that you that you love. Mm -hmm. Yes, Derek, and can I just come in there? Women's Aid run a national helpline that's open seven days a week, and if you can give out the number, a woman can ring us in total confidence to talk about any of the areas. Women's Aid? Women's Aid, it's open seven days a week. Uh, you can give out the number at the end of the show, and we will talk to a woman in total confidence. All right, Dr. Stein, you treat a lot of... Can, I, can we call them perpetrators? Uh, no, uh, abusers? I, no, I, I don't actually treat lots of abusers. Art would, would, would do that. That's, arts, that's uh, more that's arts, arts department. Uh, department. Right. I'll well, be working with, at the other end with the people who've survived the ordeal and are now wanting to put their lives back well, together again. Let, let, me, let me then ask you that somebody who perhaps was the victim of abuse five, ten, maybe even more years ago than that, and is still aware that this is coming back to them all the time, mm -hmm. or perhaps suspects that it may be what's causing problems in their life now, H how do they go about getting themselves sorted out? 
Well, suspect, uh, suspect is a very important word you said there, because many actually have suppressed the, 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 the memory of the actual abuse to such an extent that it is only a suspicion that's beginning to burgeon there. Uh, the, the most important factor is a supportive environment where they can know that they will not be judged for what they say. Very often, uh, survivors w are, are, are the worst uh, critics and judges of themselves because their self-esteem has been knocked by the abuse. So they need somebody who will support them to find their own truth and, uh, and, be, and be heard. But what, what, what have you in a situation where um, the father, an abusive father, is now the revered patriarch of a family? That can be and a daughter, clear. maybe in her married life, is having to confront that. I mean, surely there's, there's a risk of creating the guilt that she is now rubbishing the reputation and the focal point, indeed, of the focus of their family. There are so many ties within the family that have to be taken into account when a woman is working towards confronting the, the abuse, breaking the secret, and it, it's, it's a whole process of preparation towards it. Art, I mean, as the man who, who does, if, if you like, deal with the abuser in, in, many, in many occasions, is it a compulsion, or is it just, how are we going to say it, the way that somebody else might be tempted to have an extra drink or tempted to eat too much or whatever? Is it an obsession? Is it a compulsion? I, or what? It's, it's uh, you know, a very hard question to answer just in one or two sentences. There, there are different forms of abuse. It would be wrong to assume that sexual abuse is one thing. Sexual abuse can be... Uh, inappropriate touching at one end to rape and to kind of rape and murder at, at the other end. Okay. It can involve children, it can invo involve adults. Now, that's one thing about abuse. Now, as, as, as regards the abusers, there, there are different types. Some abusers, uh, what I would call, uh, uh, you know, a paedophile, is a person who is only interested in children. That's their sexual orientation. That's all orientation. they're interested in. And they start abusing usually in their uh, late teens and go on abusing all the way through their lives. And they are, uh, you know, a difficult treatment prospect, if, uh, if, if you can even use that term. Now, the, the incest offender is different um, if we're talking about the father-daughter type of situation. And, uh, you know, more, uh, you know, mentioned the, uh, kind of younger offenders, but I, I would see a lot of father-daughter uh, offenders. Now, they, they tend only to start offending in their kind of early 30s, and they can go on offending over five or ten years. Now, of course, there, there is another type of sexual abuse, which we haven't even mentioned here. We've just been talking about uh, abuse of children and abuse in the home. I, I see a huge amount of rapists, uh, men who abuse uh, adult right. women, and th right. that's another big area. Sure. It's another area which we'll deal with in another show, but Art, mm -hmm. we have about 30 seconds left. If somebody's watching this program and knows that they are an abuser, physical, mental, sexual, what do you say to them? Well, well I, I would say to them to stop. I would say to them to, uh, to contact myself through, through their own GP or a local social worker. Um, I, 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 I think that's the thing they should do. Are you asking yourself effect, or asking, are you asking them effectively to put themselves in prison? Will they be reported well, if I'm they do that? Well, I'm saying to them, you know, first of all, they must stop. And uh, that, that's the most important thing, because the, big, the most important agenda in this whole area is, uh, you know, victim uh, protection. It, it, it isn't and the offender. And they can also be destroying their own lives. Or, or they can be destroying right. children's lives. And, uh, we have exhausted our allocation of time, but not the subject. And it's one that I'm sure that we'll return to in another edition are for adults only, but we have another subject when you join us. The same time, the same place, next Wednesday, 12.30. It's adults only. George is trying to rewrite history.